What's up guys, hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, it's going to be a deviation from the usual. I'm not going to be going over any chart based technical analysis in this video. Rather, it's going to be a video focused on an educational aspect of blockchain technology. Um, and then also not only touching on cryptocurrency, blockchain solutions, etc. I'm going to be touching on religious concepts as well, relative to the Bible. Um, but to go ahead and get it started here, I'm just going to jump into the actual, so we can see right here in the top left, according to these six little bubbles right here, and then our mysterious black hole here in the center, I'm going to be going over a blockchain technology breakdown. But for our first topic here, altcoins, tokens, oh my, what we can see here are is an image of a, what I've labeled, typically people just call them cryptocurrencies, even down here because um, I took this image off offline obviously um, it I changed right here where it, it originally said top 30 cryptocurrencies but I changed it to cryptographic placeholders because this is a term that I use because it's more generalized because as you can see on this image not only are there you know stable coins crypto collateralized coins such as which is it on this um, chart image such as DAI which is collateralized by ethereum but then this well right here we have fiat collateralized so we had ust um rip to that and then we have right here sbd usddt usdc red bitcoin and then binance us dollar and then down here it says plus some chosen ones right here those are just according to like doge theta clay and iota that didn't technically um to the person who made this image which right down here says martin toma they didn't put those in any specific categories, but as I mentioned on my or mentioned on my channel a lot, the store value right here we have Bitcoin is the fundamental store value for all cryptographic placeholders, whether they be just a mundane currency, something like Dogecoin right here, or one of these three right here, utilities, securities, equities, which I'll break down into more detail here in a moment. But outside of that, as I was talking about with Bitcoin being a store of value right now just for mainly cryptocurrency as the adoption of blockchain technology in form of its various solutions and just the general fact that it can and will in due time uh, uh, and uh, intensely reshape the fabric of society in terms of global social cohesion in terms of peer-to-peer -peer interaction whether it be mundane transactions whether those transactions be small transactions or large transactions um, things to do with the metaverse, NFTs, IoT devices, etc., so on and so forth. Outside of that, we have some exchange tokens right here, which would be Binance Coin, Uniswap token, which is a decentralized exchange, which is a place where you can through so Coinbase, Binance, uh, Gemini, uh, Crypto.com, which right here would be CRO, their coin. Those are centralized exchanges, meaning that they have. You are still essentially dealing with a middleman, i.e. the company, just the people, the business, you know, obviously Coinbase, Binance, it's essentially, I mean, it's a business at the end of the day, given that it's a centralized exchange. Things like Uniswap and Sushi, which would be the token for it, Sushi Swap. And then I don't know if this might also be, I mean, obviously it, it might be a decentralized exchange right here. I don't know what this HG coin is, but Uniswap and Sushi Swap are decentralized exchanges where you can, through decentralized applications associated with smart contracts because at the end of the day smart contracts are the base coding basically like the rules the guidelines like you have a rule book for like a board game tabletop game that you play these are the for smart contracts hold the the functionalities the parameters that need to be met through some sort of transactional execution parameter in which it will this decentralized application will happen or if you want to for example given that i'm talking about decentralized exchanges you want to change you want to swap your ethereum in for dogecoin or whatever other coin this is executed by a smart contract decentralized uh, applications etc and then right here 
Again, I was mentioning about smart contracts. Ethereum is a platform, a layer one foundation that hosts smart contracts. Same thing for ADA, Cardano. We have Polkadot, Dot, Tron, which is, uh, I don't know too much about it, but I know it's something I've always been interested in. I just haven't gotten around to looking into it, but it has to do with like the uh, blockchain solutions in terms of like the actual internet itself, which I'll touch on more towards the end of this video. And obviously it's just likening back to the whole, I mean, Tron is a, uh, it's a point of uh, pop culture and being, I believe it was a book um, as well. I'm assuming that's what the movie was made from. I don't know too much about Tron in terms of its canonical context um, in regards to that. But Tron was obviously a future-based um, contextual scenario, um, you know, far ahead in technological evolution. We have Solana, Neo, and then EOS. Right here we have utility tokens, which would be like Filecoin, CVC, SC, Chainlink Link, um, BTT, and VeChain. Filecoin is basically where it's a blockchain solution wherein Filecoin basically acts as kind of like an arcade token for the blockchain solution that this protocol provides and allowing you, for example, if you don't have enough space on your computer to store files and whatnot, you can use hardware store or not hardware, but just storage space that other people have with their hardware, hardware, i.e. their computers through the functionalities of this blockchain and in, in order to do facilitate those transactions, essentially, because transactions doesn't like a transaction isn't something that needs to be vaguely thought of as just like a monetary currency type thing. A transaction can be like your NFT your metaverse property or like an actual like it's not just like currency or monetary, like I said, and it's Filecoin native token to that blockchain which facilitates people being able to basically like run out file space um the way i'm down here just nfts not really going to touch on that too much i'm assuming most of you get the idea of what that is it's just the early on onset of digitizing um property rights basically in a way which again like i said goes back to the metaverse and you know the property that you can have in metaverse and obviously things along that nature right here we have equ equity security tokens which uh, parallel slightly merge with the asset back tokens which just go back to the stable coins and whatnot again i'll touch on equity and security tokens when i go to these bubbles right here but then lastly we have digital currencies so things like xrp litecoin bitcoin cash given that bitcoin itself is more supposed to be the store of value where most of these coins are gathering their value from like i've said in the past if bitcoin were to go to zero i'm not saying that all altcoins and tokens would go to zero never recover but at least the very vast majority of the value that all altcoins and tokens hold right now would be uh, severely diminished and then bitcoin cash is basically this obviously as it says the digital currency correlative of uh, bitcoin we have stellar xlm xmr monero i don't remember what bsv is but bsv and then luna again ripped to that project Luna Classic came out, but I mean, after what happened to it, I mean, personally, why would you even want to trust it at this point? Um, I will quickly touch on XMR and Monero. It's the only, I don't think it's, I'm actually, I'm not going to say it that way. I'm not sure if it's the only completely privatized blockchain currency, etc. at this point, but it is one of the most popular ones as far as I'm concerned, um, which is, I feel like it's, it's accomplishing a very important aspect of blockchain and the fact that it is completely privatized, like, I feel like Bitcoin should be. It's not completely privatized at the end of the day, which is a, is a downside that I personally see for Bitcoin. But to go ahead and get in, break down of utilities. So what is a utility token or coin? They are platform dedicated tokens slash coins that serve as the medium for blockchain platform services. They derive their value from the function in respect to their dedicated platform. An example would be like Filecoin, like I just got done mentioning not too long ago if we go to securities we can see securities or tokens or coins that function as a traditional security asset these represent a stake in the wealth created by a third party and take their value from that party's success or failure this is in distinction from an equity token in that no ownership of the underlying venture is created security tokens are blockchain investment products which don't give any ownership in the underlying company but do take value from the company itself an example of this would be xyo oracle and essentially um, like it said and i will get to 
But before I get to what that thought that I just had there, obviously, I'm going to assume a lot of you were probably aware of, like, I think it was the seven tokens that many months ago at this point, it was sometime last year, that the SEC was hassling Coinbase about being securities. And just the whole general fact of it not being transparent enough and people not really recognizing or like truly understanding the risk when it comes to buying something like XYO, given that it is a security. But before I get to that thought that I'm holding at the current moment, here in equity, token or coin, um, are blockchain solutions. They are basically blockchain solutions to 21st century stocks. Unlike the securities, they represent ownership of some third-party asset or venture and take their value from that companies or product properties, success or failure. Um, and as I was going to say, these are closely related to securities and could be seen as a subtype of so, i.e. securities. So um, what I was trying to say about XYO was is that it's not necessarily like buying, you're like buying a stock of XYO and you own a portion of XYO. You're just basically, they created, because XYO is offering a Oracle solution and when it comes to blockchains in terms of mapping the real world data into the blockchain uh, which is facilitating the mapping out of the metaverse in terms of our actual physical reality which ties into you know the virtual reality goggles we've already been aware of in recent times like the oculus rift htc vibe uh vibe and like and for example the uh like the, the apple glasses like um, samsung glasses sony glasses like I'm not sure if those last two companies have them or have talked about them at this point, but I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, and Google Glasses, I know I know for a fact they've talked about it as well, but those are basically um, early IoT type devices as well. I mean, as I mentioned, Jasmine on this channel as well is an IoT based um, blockchain solution, which is trying to bring decentralization, uh, not decentralization, but democratization to um, your data in terms of IoT devices. So for example, if you have a laptop in the future that is an IoT device and a website's asking you like cookies whenever they ask you for, or just in general, whether a website's asking you for data or a company wants to see your data or like Apple accessing certain data on your phone or TikTok having access to data on your phone, things like that. Instead of them just asking you and you okaying it or them taking it without you even knowing it, through Jasmine you can democratize it um, for a... Uh, monetary currency based incentive which you then get paid in jasmine coin uh, but an example of an equity based project i have done here is, so the, the dow which is a decentralized autonomous organization and have a la ethereum because plenty of people are already online to say that ethereum is basically a business an organization an enterprise at this point it was i mean it is made as a smart contract platform to help facilitate the integration and adoption of blockchain solutions into the business institution enterprise world etc um, and the fact that they just recently moved to um, proof of stake is also not necessarily a good thing either as well which i will get to the personal downsides that i see a proof of stake um, as well and they also i mean plenty of people in the past have said that ethereum has tried to and has essentially already i mean at this point put tried to put too much functionality i think i'm remembering this correctly but put too much functionality within its layer one foundation which is just going to inevitably down the road cause chaos for the main chain just the blockchain in general whichever one may actually end up doing something like that but right here we have a breakdown of what proof of work is proof of work being native to the Bitcoin blockchain is the progenerate consensus mechanism. Progenerate is just basically the origin, the first consensus mechanism. That's what I mean by that. Um, this form of consensus mechanism requires a lot of processing power, hence the label proof of work, which is directly related to cryptocurrency mining. As in the days of old, we used to mine for gold as a source for a store of value. We now, in the modern age, digitally through electric output, mine Bitcoin instead of energy. Um, instead of geez, my bad. Instead of the energy of man-based mining, we have now in the modern era advanced to the energy of electrical-based mining. These digital, virtually-based miners, through their electrical output, are in a race to be the one to solve a given mathematical puzzle, which, when solved, makes an addition of a single block to the blockchain as a whole. This winner is the one to update the blockchain with the most up-to-date bundled block of verified transactions native to the chain. 
and also receives a given amount of crypto. In the case of Bitcoin, dependent upon the given halvening epoch, the reward is 50, 25, 12.5, currently on 6.25 per block reward, so on and so forth until it has been estimated around 2140 for the last and final Bitcoin to be mined. The form of figures are known as the block size with respect to the amount of Bitcoin rewarded to the lucky miner who solves the mathematical puzzle of each additional block, which it is the complexity of said mathematical puzzle and the computations, etc., that goes into solving said mathematical puzzle that requires so much energetic electrical output. Proof of work is great for bringing decentralization and security to a blockchain, but when it comes to scalability, this is where proof of work finds its downfall, and this is due to the intensity of energy consumption in the mining process. The more the miners, the larger the decentralization and security grows. Down here, I have a pictorial flowchart of Bitcoin and how they are minted. So we're going to start up here at the left. So the life of a new Bitcoin starts when a number of existing Bitcoins are used in transactions. Right here, we have Dan and James of Bitcoin from his secure wallet. The software automatically bundles this transactions with others. So basically all the other transactions that are going on with respect to the current block into a block then transmits the block to a network of computers so that everything can be verified. Three, computers on the network fast act fast to verify the block of transactions. Four, once proven valid, and by, going back to three, computers on the network is basically sent, uh, going back to um, nodes if I had to. And I mean, and I, I have it somewhere on here at some point, but not all nodes when it comes to Bitcoin, I'll just speak specifically here. Not all nodes are miners, but all miners are nodes. But anyways, going to four, once proven valid, the block is added to the entire ledger of all Bitcoin transactions. The shared ledger is called the blockchain. Five, for future verifications, up, uh, for future verifications, updated block, the updated blockchain is then distributed to the entire network. And six, so the final step, the miners who were first to verify the transaction and update the blockchain are rewarded with Bitcoins. Going here to Bitcoin's Lightning Network, given that this is basically the layer two of proof of work when it comes to Bitcoin. Um, but to click in on here, zoom in a little bit more. Let's see, that's good. So the Lightning Network was created and introduced in order to solve the scalability issues that face Bitcoin's blockchain due to the consensus mechanism proof of work. The Lightning Network acts as a layer two solution in terms of blockchain scalability built on top of the layer one foundation that is the Bitcoin blockchain and the ledger associated with. Imagine that the Bitcoin blockchain is a spherical ball of yarn, that this looped ball of yarn is an informational highway Houses nodes. Again, like I said earlier, not all nodes are miners, but all miners are nodes. In each of these nodes, you can, you can okay, so like I'm mentioning with the, um, the, the, the looped ball of yarn, imagine the nodes, whether they be miners or nodes, let's say there's 100, there's 100 nodes on the, the ball of yarn and the string along it, which, act, which look like just circular dots on the ball of yarn. The black ones are just nodes, people running node software on the computer that houses um, the blockchain ledger, etc., in order to make this more secure and whatnot, decentralized. And then you have white dots on the the uh, string of yarn with respect to the ball of yarn that act as the miners. Um, but in each of these nodes within itself, hold within itself the information respective to the Bitcoin blockchain that the blockchain may intercommunicate in order to maintain systemic equilibrium, just efficiency, you know, ample enough, at least efficient enough, decentralization, security, etc. Just the general things that blockchain is trying to bring about with its solutions. Now think about the Lightning Network, hence the name, as a plasma helicy. So just again, like I mentioned, I've already mentioned a ball of yarn, which is already technically kind of looped in a helixy like fashion. Now we're going to think about this spherical ball of yarn, but now there's another loop basically of yarn helicing Kind of like you no know, DNA, but not a, I'm not necessarily talking about a double helix right now. I'm just talking about one spiral, hence me just using helicy that twists around the uh, the twist around and spirals around the main highway, which again is the string of yarn and the the, the first spherical ball of yarn that I've mentioned, which hopefully you're imagining in your head when I talk about this stuff. But um, and 
the main highway is the Bitcoin blockchain itself and the Lightning Network or the Plasma Helicy acts as a side highway, basically an off-chain and off-site highway outside of the main chain essentially in order to more efficiently process transactions. When two parties wish to transact, a multi-signature wallet is set up and is saved to the Bitcoin blockchain, which opens up a bi-directional payment channel. The Lightning Network allows the two parties to conduct an unlimited amount of transactions at higher efficiency without ever touching the information stored on the blockchain or the Bitcoin blockchain itself. With each transaction, both parties sign an updated balance sheet in order to properly reflect how much Bitcoin is associated with each wallet. Once the two parties are finished transacting, this payment channel is closed out and the resulting balance sheet then becomes stored on the Bitcoin blockchain itself, i.e. Uh, as the channel was not closed out, everything was being housed through basically the helicy wrapped around the initial ball of yarn and then and once it's done, it then goes to the actual main highway itself. But to continue, if the funds become disputed, both parties can utilize the signed balance sheet to recover their rightful funds. The Lightning Network automatically finds the shortest path with the goal of allowing its users to make smaller payments without fees or delays. This technology utilizes the laws of physical nature of the universe and its intergalactic functions, hence the act of the Lightning Network finding the shortest route, which directly correlates to the physical law of light and its path of least time or resistance, once more likening back to the name itself, the Lightning Network. And as I've showed videos on the channel of Passive Jack Mallers speaking, who is the CEO of Strike and has just a lot to do with the Lightning Network in general, he too, well, I mean, also has said that uh, Bitcoin is something that just takes in and factors in the laws of physics in terms of the speed of light, which, you know, just goes literally right back to what I said. Um, and the fact, like, for example, lightning, when it, the, the path that lightning takes or any plasma strike, basically, like even if it's like on the sun, there's plasma tornadoes, plasma vortexes. But going again back to lightning, lightning, when it strikes, which is a dielectric discharge event, uh, of energy into the entropic, entropic uh, reality that we exist in right now. But the the lightning is finding, and the reason it looks the way it does is because it's taking the, the path of least resistance, so the path of least time. But going down here to this image, this is basically just a pictorial image that, again, just likens back to the... I will use this image a lot throughout this, so remember this image, take note of it. This is basically the ball of yarn that I was thinking, you know, telling you all to think about. Imagine this as... The Bitcoin main chain along this, these, this tech, it's, this is technically one continuous line. If you were to start right here and follow it, it's all just one. If I were to cut at some point along the string, cut it in half, I could just, I could straighten it out into a single straight line. Along this line, lie dots, some of them black, some of them white, which are either miners, which are nodes, or just nodes, which are not miners, and they're just computers, some sort of, some form of hardware housing the um, node software which holds it within itself the basically the blockchain ledger etc um, but so that concludes what I wanted to go over when it comes to proof of work so now we're going to go into proof of stake Within a proof-of-stake based blockchain, instead of the energy intensive process of proof of work this consensus mechanism utilizes the crypto stake of a network participant or validator which is chosen to add the most up-to-date bundle of transactions to the given blockchain while also receiving a reward of cryptocurrency. This chosen validator verifies the most up-to-date bundle of transactions and adds so to the blockchain and is chosen based upon the size of their crypto stake in the staking pool and time spent as a network participant providing a crypto stake to said pool. In other words, this is rewarding the most in invested participants within the staking pool. Once the winning validator has verified the most up-to-date block of transactions, other validators secondarily, so other network participants, secondarily attest to the verification of the winning validator and when a threshold, certain number, so a limit of attestations have been made, the network finally updates the blockchain and then subsequently is adding the next block to the overall blockchain, which again, you can just in general, that image that I just got done showing you, the ball of yarn and whatnot, which is mathematically known as a hop vibration, it's just an abstract geometrical mathematical object. Um, but you can just think about a blockchain basically as that, and then 
Imagine if you just were to see a block continuously added along the lines and basically the loops that you are seeing in that image that I showed you. Um, but all of the participating validators, validators receive a reward in the native cryptocurrency. So for example, Cardano right now, which uh, Ethereum just recently moved to proof of stake as well. Um, but and the the uh, reward they receive in the native cryptocurrency is in respect to the proportion of a given validator's stake. So again, it just depends upon how much someone has staked themselves in form of their risk into the success of the chain, the efficiency of it, and whatnot. Um, validators can lose a portion of their stake through a process called slashing if their node goes offline or if they validate a bad block of transactions. When it comes to Ethereum, in order to be a validator, one must stake at least 32 ETH. Proof of stake claims to be uh, to better efficiency, reduce centralization, make 51% attacks exponentially more costly. Also allows the community to resort to a social recovery and that an honest chain can be claimed if a 51% attack were to overcome the network. Um, I have my personal reservations when it comes to proof of stake. I don't have really any issues there's actually there's a lot of typos in here and then i'm reading back through this um, but anyways um i don't have a problem with the it making it more efficient i i don't right here when it comes to reducing centralization i mean I, it, at the end of the day it just depends upon who actually made the blockchain itself whether or not they use a different type of proof of stake because there's multiple types of proof of stake which you know some of them may be um uh, man, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, prioritizing decentralization more than another type of proof of stake. But my main contention with proof of stake is the fact that it is apparently supposed to reduce centralization. I feel like on the contrary, again, it just depends upon the specifics behind the blockchain itself, but it can actually lead to far more centralization. Um, and it, in terms of making the 51% attacks exponentially more costly, that goes back to the fact that um, with Bitcoin over time, the block reward, so the reward you're getting, is less. So it's opposite with proof of stake in that uh, depending upon how much you have staked in, if, you, if you're if you trying to act bad as a malicious actor or a malicious node, etc., then, I mean, you're just kind of costing yourself even more if you, for whatever reason, don't successfully carry out your attack and whatnot. Um, but to go down to this image down here, as another flow chart for proof of stake like I'd had for proof of work up here in the top right for one we have validators so Ross Joey and Rachel staking some of their coins to get picked up for adding a new block of transactions all these coins going down to two coins at stake in an escrow account then I go to three the function so the consensus mechanism basically with respect to the blockchain randomly picks a validator um, and then Joey, so let's say Joey got selected to add his block to the blockchain network. He is the chosen validator of all the people staking in their coins to validate the next block. Um, this new block is validated by validators in the network as the attestations that I was talking about to further just verify the block. If valid, Joey gets to add his new block and receives a network fee as his reward. And if invalid, Joey loses his staked coins to the network. Here for delegated proof of stake, a simple definition. This tweaking a proof of stake delegates through a voting system to the top 20 staking wallets, the power and ability to verify the latest up-to-date bundled block of transactions to the blockchain. This seeks to further democratize proof of stake. For, um, sorry, I forgot. for lease proof of stake, it's rather similar to traditional proof of stake, but allows for users to lease their staking ability to other connected nodes similar to master nodes in which a minimum amount be released that provides the ability for smaller users to get more frequent rewards, further incentivizing smaller users to participate in the system itself. Here for master node proof of stake, large stakers, i.e. the master nodes themselves, receive extra privileges and rewards as opposed to normal stakers. A master node is a well-connected node that has a predisposed minimum that must be staked in order to become a master node. Considered to be more trustworthy than a regular node, it's talking about master nodes due to their heightened stake, i.e. a heightened risk if also especially to be found faulty in their validation process. When I mentioned the, when I was talking about earlier about how 
to me, it seems like proof of stake can definitely lend towards higher centralization, which I'm sure plenty of other people believe that as well. But I feel like masternode proof of stake will definitely, even though it says right here, considered to be the masternodes considered to be more trustworthy. It, like I said, it, it really all at the end of the day just depends upon and goes back to the intentions of the people who have made the blockchain itself. Um, and it, whoever the master node belongs to, it depends upon the intentions of that person or I mean, obviously, I mean, that, I mean, I feel like that should be kind of commonsensical and obvious. Intentions are pretty much everything when it comes to the motives and the reasonings behind things in this world and decisions, um, et cetera, so on and so forth. But again, just to go back down to this image, I was mentioning with proof of work and the miners and whatnot, you can just imagine on here, you have a bunch of dots. Some of them might just be nodes. Or for in this case, we're just going to think about all the dots on here, even though they're not on here. They're just all the people staked into the... The, to the blockchain protocol and whatnot with the coins that they have and then the function which nicely just ties into how this like i said this is a hot for patient it's a mathematical object which means that it has a literal mathematical function associated with it one that you could specifically think of is the uh, zeta function once it is carried out to quaternionic space which is three dimensions across time um, but it basically like i said and it goes back to this image the function randomly picks someone, one of the dots on here, which are stakers, to validate the chain and then add the next block to it. But going back here to the next bubble, now we're going to jump into the various layers associated with blockchain technology right now. We're going to start off with what most people should be familiar with in layer one foundational protocols. Layer one blockchain protocols or main chain architectures are terms commonly used to denote the foundational underlying basis for blockchain based applicative solutions. And by this, what is meant is the blockchain based applicative solutions. Oh wait, no, I got confused on the line. Okay, what I meant by that is the technological advance advancements that can be brought upon the global society in terms of socially cohesive peer to peer interactions, whether it be simple and mundane two party transactions which have been bettered by Bitcoin's Lightning Network, acting as its native layer two, or to the capabilities that Ethereum's decentralized autonomous organization and smart contracts, decentralized applications, et cetera, bring to institutions, businesses, enterprises, et cetera. And then down here, I just have the, the big three layer ones, Bitcoin, Cardano, and Ethereum. Bitcoin not currently supporting smart contracts. Someone like John McAfee, who is now dead and a lot of people probably thought he was crazy and still definitely think he's crazy said that you could never put smart contracts on bitcoin cardano and ethereum obviously have smart contract capability um, i'm not going to say that you, it, uh, it's impossible to put smart contracts on bitcoin um it may be not exactly how we know smart contracts today but if i had to guess i don't think anything's impossible i feel like it, there, there's some form of smart contract-esque capabilities that could actually be brought to Bitcoin itself. I mean, it's already got a layer two. I mean, for scalability issues and whatnot. So, I mean, I feel like that's definitely obviously a big leap when it comes to that technology. But up here, we're going to go into scalability solutions when it comes to layer ones. Layer twos are actually scalability solutions themselves, but there are two specific solutions that you can do to the layer one main chain itself in order to scale it in, in, in terms of a scalar factor. Um, so, right here, main one that I'm focusing on here is sharding. In simple, the sharding with respect to the layer one protocol is the breaking down of the transactional processes on the main chain into smaller data fragments, i.e. shards, which allows the main chain to process in a parallel manner rather than in a less efficient sequential one after another manner. The changing of a, ma a main chain's consensus mechanism is also a scaling solution of this category, which is what Ethereum accomplished in moving from proof of work to proof of stake. Ethereum also deals in with sharding which this image down here is meant to con uh, convey the idea of sharding so you can see how let's say this down here so these just these first nine black nodes we'll call them of the bitcoin blockchain this is what it just originally started out with and a whole bunch of processes transactional throughput whatnot happens on each of these servers these nodes basically and they're doing them in a one after another sequential manner which in a form of analogy that I've used in the past, imagine you have construction workers at a build site. Why do you think that the construction workers are diversified, basically sharded out 
to their own specific little projects instead of every single worker let's say there's 50 workers all 50 of the workers work on this wall of the house and then they all in a sequential one after another manner go to the next wall and they all just work on that wall if they do it that way it's going to take way longer for the house to be built and it's going to be less efficient obviously but if each of these workers are broken up into um, five groups of ten and one focuses on the walls and one focuses on the foundation the roof the appliances etc then it's going to get done a lot faster and that's essentially what this diagram is getting across here that this set of workers um, basically get device diversified um, to this project etc but more in line with this what this picture is saying is so all the processes and the transactions on this server or node get broken down into smaller sub fragments focusing on smaller data points and instead of doing them in again that sequential one after another manner it parallelizes the process instead of you know doing it in the less efficient way so that touches on the layer one foundations now to the layer two scaling solutions layer two scaling solutions differing from the main chain solution mentioned prior may the sharding and the changing of a consensus mechanism our overlaying networks that is layer two scaling solutions that lie upon the layer one's foundational protocol as spoken about for earlier for bitcoin this is the lightning network and for ethereum its correspondent has been labeled the raiden network which i find that interesting if you're not aware of the game mortal Kombat. i mean it's been out for decades at this point one of the most popular if not the most popular fighting game that there is raiden was just a deity with respect to the canonical context of the story associated with that game there was movies as well probably plenty of other things as well like books or some sort of comic books or stuff but raiden was a deity who had control over lightning essentially so that's and so i mean these are names are essentially the same thing which i again like i just find that rather funny that they pretty much chose a name on the exact same thing but the two former scaling solutions for bitcoin and ethereum are known as state channels which brings us back to the off main chain bidirectional functionality generated with Bitcoin's lightning network, et cetera, so on and so forth, as I mentioned earlier when I was actually talking about it. But Bitcoin's lightning network is meant for large numbers of microtransactions, i.e. smaller transactions in a limited time period, going back to it, you know, lightning network, making it fast, etc. Whereas Ethereum's rated network is meant to enable smart contract um, and also, I mean, outside of that decentralized application functionality as well. Down here, I just have a little cool, cool image, kind of just to denote Bitcoin with its its Lightning Network and whatnot. You can basically just think about this Bitcoin block. This is like the uh, like the mega block, basically. And then within this block, you could envision that hot formation, so that ball of yarn that I've been talking about. And that ball of yarn, I know that even though you're seeing it completed. And obviously we're still adding uh, uh, blocks to the Bitcoin blockchain and technically will, you know, until society gets completely destroyed. And as long as transactions are going technically unto infinity, if like, for example, theoretically humans were to just become immortal for whatever reason, which we can't do that ourselves, but I'll get towards that at the end of the video. I'm getting ahead of myself right now. But anyways, you can think about basically the whole overarching blockchain as like a physical chain itself of blocks holding transaction bundles over a period of time like that ball of yarn the hot formation is forming inside of here which you could think about as kind of like little like like little technology bubbles that you're seeing inside here and then we have our lightning bolt like i mentioned um, which i feel like this is just a really cool uh, image to, to think about and whatnot as well like you can think about obviously over here on the left we have like bitcoin just kind of the logo and whatnot acting as the layer one foundation over here we have the lightning network and then up top we don't really have anything yet which jumps into layer three and interoperability solutions which i will touch to here in the coming time but here for types of um, layer two solutions for the foundation protocol main chain itself in simple, the action of nesting blockchains forms various off main chain protocol solutions or nodes in a way you can think about them as that, but don't specifically categorize it to a node. I, I will use node and I probably already have in this video for things that, you know, like 
probably necessarily shouldn't technically in most accurate or accurate or precise sense be used that but I only do it because it kind of just conveys a general simple intuitive idea of what I'm trying to get across but anyways to reiterate the action of nesting blockchains forms various off main chain protocol solutions on top of the layer one foundation these off main chain protocols will form a parent child relationship to the main chain meaning that the main chain will delegate certain functionalities to a respective off main chain protocol in order to alleviate functional stress on the main chain itself which kind of just again likens back to the the lightning network and that it's off siting um, micro transactional throughput to the lightning uh, network ecosystem I'll say in order to you know have less uh, uh, throughput power on the main chain itself and then after it's done through that that bi-directional the basically offsite payment channels in the the state channels and whatnot it will then once the two parties are done with their transactions and all the stuff that they want to do then it prints it and sends the actual information back to the blockchain but the off chain or the off main chain protocols perform their respective functionality then send back the informational output to the main chain not only does this nesting solution take functional stress off the main chain, but can lead to an exponen exponential increase in scalability. Omize Go, which is an Ethereum-based decentralized application, works via a nesting solution called Plasma. Which again, down here I have a diagram I found for that. So again, like I said, you can have we have a root chain, which is another word for main chain, basically a layer one foundation. And then again, so we have the we have the plasma contract. This little, um, so like I said, parent-child relationship. This is the parent. All four of these are children, off-site locations, terminals, nodes, protocols, whatever you want to call them. Um, this one has to do with micropayments, social networking capabilities when it comes to blockchain, decentralized exchange, and then a private blockchain. But then again, like I said, I'm at this this hop vibrations are fundamental to our natural universe. Um, as I've mentioned in the past, I, I am a polymath and I have, when it comes to a scientific background, um, and many of you might be thinking, oh, this guy just used the word scientifical. Yeah, there's a lot of words that I use that are literally are not words of our dictionary. But anyways, my main points of study have been in physics, fundamental physics, um, periodic, fundamental physics. You're not going to find the word aperionic anywhere because it's a word. It's a term that I've coined again. Like I said, I am a polymath. I'm a self-educated polymath, uh, and I'm not likening myself. And I'm not saying I'm a genius or anything. But if you don't know what a polymath is, that's what Isaac Newton was. That's what Leonardo da Vinci was, and plenty of other very smart and other intelligent people throughout our time in history that made a lot of great contributions to society. But this is just fundamental to basically you're kind of looking at, especially if you take it with regards to the zeta function which is one of the millennial problems for mathematics that you get a million dollars for solving as far as i'm concerned i believe that i have actually solved it um i haven't put that out anywhere um, because it's technically a part of a book i'm writing i'm not really done with the book i don't i plan to get it published this year but there's also a lot of other things on the horizon that i see that might uh, delay that quite reasonably but anyways, this is just like I was saying, it's fundamental. Imagine at the center right here, we have the Ethereum root chain and then around it, we have floating the um, the, the uh, parent child or the, the child basically to the parent. So we have the plasma contract in terms of social network, micropayments, decentralized exchange, etc., all floating around in this outer portion right here as kind of like off-site locations again like back to the lightning network but finally here for layer three interoperability solutions shrouded in mystery to many the realm of layer three interoperability solutions brings about the internet of value a proposal by xrp ripple the internet of value aspires to be a blockchain agnostic mega ecosystem where data based value is transferred easily cheaply and reliably this is very important do not confine data based value just to currency based value but rather everything we have conscious awareness of 
now and the present and the past and in the coming future holds some form of mental, social, emotional value to some individual, even if it just to one soul. These points of conscious data-based value range from currency, assets, stocks, property rights of any form, a la metaverse property, <clears throat> excuse me, NFTs, etc. Scientific discoveries, electoral votes, literally anything that has the ability to hold data-based value within the consciousness of one's soul or to the blockchain data bank ledger, or just a blockchain data bank ledger, which directly parallels with and to the Internet of Things, um, unto the Internet of Value, for it is the Internet of Value, as far as I'm concerned, that will eventually, ideally, and ultimately provide the climactic backbone of Internet of Things devices and their exchange and harboring of database to value. So on here, I know what I said may to a lot of you be a lot to take in because I use words like consciousness and soul, which are very esoteric to pretty much everybody nowadays and a lot of people really don't even, especially with consciousness, consciousness and trying to like program it and whatnot. As I've touched on in, the pre, uh, in past videos in this channel, a blockchain protocol solution, whatever you want to call it, known as Trius, has to do with artificial intelligence and basically, you know, obviously the robots or just even if it just looks like a like a little like a Wally with arms, it's picking apples off the, the, the trees and the, and, the, uh, and whatnot and, and putting it in the baskets. Uh, Trius is basically through blockchain technology and whatnot, providing solutions and capabilities um, which will allow us to trust the software that is basically operating and causing these robotic devices, these artificially intelligent robots, in order to do these, these what we know now as this man, man based jobs. And I mean, in even like retail workers like Walmart, Target, like fast food workers, eventually these people are going to be put, they're not going to have jobs anymore because they're, we're going to be able to replace them with robots and things like that. And again, Trius is just trying to, with their solutions and protocol, lead us into a world where blockchain governs the software, basically, with respect to the hardware, which goes into, like I said, the blockchain data bank ledger. Basically, a blockchain was, you could think about it as the human mind in form of the memory based data bank, or like, for example, like ChatGPT now, like the, it, a robotic form of intelligence needs a data bank which you can store memories when it, I mean when it specifically comes to humans or just information in general so it can start to form through some form of software as some sort of personality or consciousness so that it can actually interact and make action in the world because if it doesn't have information in order to create its own personality in the way that it thinks about the world then I mean it can't do anything because it doesn't have anything like an ego to re it can't it doesn't have a form of ego egoic consciousness to relate itself to the world um right here this again we're seeing the hot probation here um before i get to that so examples of things trying to bring in uh interoperability solutions would be think well, quant is another one as well but right here for specific examples i have internet protocol and inter, inter ledger protocol Again, another important word here would be to blockchain agnostic mega ecosystem, which goes down to this image right here. So as I mentioned in the past, I feel like it would make most sense that at some point there is a layer three interoperability solution that comes to Bitcoin. Like I was mentioning earlier, like on the top right here, we don't have anything yet. We have Bitcoin as the main chain, layer, layer one foundation. We have Lightning Network as the layer two foundation. But what's our what's our layer three interoperability? I feel like it makes most sense that Bitcoin, which what you're right now looking at in terms of what I'm talking about with respect to this contextual bubble is instead of it this just representing the Bitcoin main chain with another Lightning Network in a helix like fashion going around the, 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 the lines that you see currently. This is now what I just got done saying, the blockchain agnostic mega ecosystem where Bitcoin sits at the very center as the layer one foundation with its layer two, with its layer three interoperability functionality built onto it, which 
acts as the ability to agnosticize the entire mega ecosystem and basically disregard in a simple way the differences between Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, and literally every other single cryptographic or cryptocurrency blockchain solution protocol, etc., which would all be spiraling around Bitcoin at the center. Um, it has to disregard the differences in layer twos, like for example, the Ethereum will have or Cardano or XRP or whatever else in order to bring that ag agnostization to it so they can actually in a cohesive manner operate as that mega ecosystem as I have been calling it. Um, but the reason why I think it makes the most sense for Bitcoin to be here at the center when it comes to this is because as I was mentioning on the, on the first contextual bubble of this video, Bitcoin is the fundamental store of value for all cryptographic currencies, placeholders, whatever you equities, whatever you want to call it, essentially. Like I said, if Bitcoin were to crash to zero, which I don't see it happening, I don't, one, I don't know, obviously, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, for, I'm, I'm a lean to the fact of not thinking that it would cause something like Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, or whatever else to crash to zero and never gain in value again, because I'd have to assume that there would still be other conscious minds within the actual physical global ecosystem as a global society that find value in Ethereum, Cardano, or XRP. But at the same time, given that I'm theorizing everything I'm saying right now, if Bitcoin crashes, then that might completely obliterate any trust that anybody has in any blockchain protocol, given that Bitcoin is like, it was the first one, it's the progenitor, it is it is literally the top dog when it comes to blockchain solutions and its technology as a whole. Um, but again, yeah, I just I feel like it makes the most sense for Bitcoin to be the uh, basically the interledger protocol or the internet protocol and have some sort of layer three solution built on top of it instead of it going to some other blockchain and things along that nature. Um, but that concludes the educational blockchain technology breakdown aspect of this video. Now I'm going to jump into the other, which I guess technically is more so the main important part of this video. It's what I care about more so, which goes to this right side right here and is what factors into our mysterious black hole or question mark right here. So we have blockchain, a Trojan horse. What are the true motives and intentions behind the push of blockchain right here? I have a horseman, a Trojan horse basically, and associated with Bitcoin. I'm not trying to lay like heavy emphasis on Bitcoin being the major evil here. But the only reason why I have Bitcoin pointed out so significantly is because it, I mean, it was like I've been saying, it's the progenitor of blockchain technology, etc., and whatnot. So again, like I said, I'm going to be talking about the Bible in this video. Like I've said previously on my channel, I know a lot of you may not like this and I'm pretty sure I probably lost subscribers because I've been talking about the Bible a lot more recently, but I literally don't care. I have this channel, not because I'm trying to make money off of it, but because I want to get certain information out to people. But when it comes to the book of Revelation, it opens out with um, churches to this, uh, or letters written by Christ Jesus to the seven churches. Um, and I mean, those churches include apostasy churches and denominational churches and other labels for them as well. But once it really starts in chapter six, after the basically the introduction of Revelation starts out, we have the first, or not the first, but the seven seals begin to be opened up, which line up with the birth pangs that Jesus, or Yahushua, which is the more precise name, that is the Hebraic Israelite term for um, the Lord in form of Messiah and our Savior, who died on the cross for the sins of his people, shed that blood for us, and then rose three days later and ascended back to heaven with the Father, whom he is, uh, when it comes to the Trinity, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are all one. Um, the Lord, our God of Israel, is one. He is our one true God, Yahweh, Yahushua, HaMashiach. Um, if any, I don't think I mentioned it on this channel before, but I'm a Christ-following Israelite Jew from the tribe of Manasseh. Um, but anyways, it's like I was mentioning, these are the seven seals, which are the birth pangs which at this point I'm convinced last about three and a half years and line up with what Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24 in terms of nations rising up against nations. You will hear rumors of wars, etc. and so on, um, according to what he says in Matthew 24. 
which, I mean, obviously we've been going through a lot of that recently with the whole Ukraine invasion, the rumor of war in general, pestilences, famines, um, food shortages, supply shortages, supply chain breakdowns. Um, but going to the white horseman right here is typically because later in Revelation, Jesus comes on also a white horse and it is the whole goal of the Antichrist or just Satan in general to imitate Christ as much as possible in order to deceive people. But as you can see right here, this white horseman has a crow, not a crow, wow, I just combined those two words. He has a bow, has a crown, and he went out to conquer. What's very interesting about this is, is that before I get to that thought, in 2020, Saturn and Jupiter conjoined and was the best conjunction for uh, like maybe I think it was like five decades or something but it was the best conjunction in a quite a decent period of time it was a great conjunction I believe is what it's specifically called which just means they got closest to conjoining and like I said pretty decent amount of period of time so it was an important conjunction and typically this has been likened to the Bethlehem star which is associated with the three wise men and the birth of Jesus and whatnot which, why I'm bringing this up is because I'm likening it to the White Horseman and the fact that the Antichrist, like I said, is trying to deceive and uh, imitate the actual true Messiah who is, whom is Christ Jesus as best as possible in order to deceive. But when you actually take the crown of this White Horseman, in Latin, crown tra uh, translates to corona. Or, you know, I obviously in the word cor uh, coronation, which is the crowning of Corona is seen in there. Um, and obviously we've been going through the coronavirus pandemic. So I don't think that's that's obviously not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Everything happens for a fine tuned, exact, precise reason. Um, and then when you go to bow, bow translates to toxin, toxon, well, technically toxon, T-O-X-O-N. And then obviously toxon is toxin with an I. And then obviously poison would be another word associated with so I'm not going to specifically point on what I'm getting out with that um, for obvious reasons which I'm assuming most of you would be aware of but just think about it crown translates to corona coronavirus and we have toxin toxin poison and you know, like the bow is like a sharp thing and whatnot maybe some of you are getting the point there we have our second seal red horseman here Peace removed, violence breaks out, has swords, this is basically just insinuating wars, as you can see, Red Horseman, with like, a, like almost like a Knights Templar looking character up here. Right here we have our third seal, the Black Horse, balance scales, huge inflation, oil, and wine spared. This has to do, obviously, with, you know, like I said, inflation. The America, right now, is in a pretty bad spot of inflation, and in general, just inflation is not really too good right now. So again, we're seeing all these things and we have been since the COVID pandemic began. Right here we have our fourth seal, the pale horse, so the horseman of death, with whom has Hades with him, one fourth of the earth killed with sword, fam famine, death, and beasts. Sword's pretty obvious. So like, I mean, brother against brother, people just killing themselves, everything going on in Ukraine, famine, plenty of people have died within recent times due to supply chain shortages, etc., especially in third world co countries recently due to lack of food. Um, death, obviously, is just kind of a general correlating what this means. And then beasts, beasts does not necessarily have to mean like bears, animals, and whatnot. Beasts can be biological organisms, which again, I'm painting a picture, picture back to this white horseman. So hopefully you'll see what I'm saying there. So we have our fifth seal, the martyrs cry out. Martyrs cry out, how long? Not until the number of brethren to be killed is complete. This is likening back to the completion of the gospel being spread throughout the earth, which is just basically one of the parameters that needs to be met before the actual tribulation. The seven year tribulation begins, which is broken up into the first three and a half years, which is just the tribulation. Then the second half is the great tribulation as Jesus called it in Matthew. In general, this is Israel's tribulation, not the church's tribulation, which I'll get to what I mean by that here in a minute. We have our sixth seal, celestial signs. We see the earthquakes, the sun darkens, the moon turns red, stars fall, and the sky begins to recede like a scroll. Jesus also spoke about this in Matthew 24, that the sun be turned to black. Um, 
and that the moon shall not give its light or essentially turning red a lot of the t this is likely this light this could likely be insinuating some sort of nuclear fallout some sort of which i mean obviously has been on the horizon recently with everything going on in russia ukraine and whatnot and not too re uh, long ago recently china shot up an artificial sun which was it was smaller and more compactified more dense and it, it got hotter than our actual sun which i mean i feel like that if anything kind of points at the fact that like if we have a nuclear holocaust ba basically they could we could just shoot up an artificial sun and be fine which obviously it's not a good thing to begin with um so leading into the seventh seal they this image has lining up just in general with the rapture heaven silent about half an hour um, in the Revelation 11, 12, when it says come up here, it's not, that's not talking about the rapture. It's talking about the two witnesses of Revelation 11, whom are Elijah and Moses. I mentioned in my community tab the other day, if you're not aware, um, if you haven't looked at my Twitter account, my name on there is in Hebrew. It stands for Elijah. So you, those of you listening to this video, you do with that information what you will. But I'm talking about this stuff for a very specific reason. As I said, the seven seals, and all of them have been opened up yet because the church has not been raptured yet. The rapture has not occurred, but although we are getting very close, like I said, all this seems to be lining up with the COVID pandemic, lining up with the opening of the first seal, uh, the seven seals, which are the birth pangs and are likely as the general tribulation time period is partitioned in the three and a half year segments. These are going to last three and a half years as well. And this year, 2023 which also if you add up the numbers in 2023 adds up to seven about halfway into this year it will be three and a half years since i genuinely believe that the first seal was starting to being opened up by the lamb i.e jesus christ christ jesus yahushua yahweh yahushua hachmashiach began opening them up at the beginning of the covid pandemic um so again you do what you will with that information but so the seventh seal um, the, there's a heptatic structure within the Bible, which is just a sevenfold structure. The seventh seal contains within it in a logarithmic fashion. So like a logarithmic man, uh, Mandelbrot fractal zoom, which again goes back to the, the hot vibration that I've been talking about in this video. Um, if you remember what it looked like in your head, if you were to start from either the North Pole or the South Pole, or technically it's a conjugative counterclockwise and clockwise rotation when it comes to dielectromagnetism in general as a physical functional aspect of our natural reality but if you were to start at the top of one of those vortexes which it just looks like a tornado and you were to logarithmically zoom in towards the center so basically if you were to start at like the top of a galaxy and logarithmic zoom in logarithmically zoom in towards the center of the galaxy you would essentially see a mandelbrot or just in general just a fact a fractal because nature's fractal it's very self-similar if you are familiar with my content you know i mentioned that with the charts a lot i mean obviously we'll look at the charts if you can look at it in a non-logarithmic fashion but a logarithmic fashion fashion proposes a better view of the charts um, but like i was mentioning within the seven seals heptatic structure a logarithmic unfolding within the seven seals outcomes in a logarithmic fashion the seven trumpets the 144,000, 12,000 from each of the 12 tri tri tribes from israel are sealed before these seven calamities of these trumpets unfold which are led by moses and elijah during the first three and a half years of israel's tribulation which again the first three and a half years of the tribulation and the latter three and a half years of the great tribulation during the first three and a half years while moses and elijah along with the 144,000, do their prophesying and eventually are overcome and killed by the beast who comes out of the bottomless pit so the antichrist eventually overcomes and kills them and then that leads into halfway point of the israel's tribulation so the seven years where the abomination of desolation is set up wherein the antichrist revokes his covenant that he made his false covenant that he made and demands worship unto him he claims to be god fully god himself saying that he basically is jesus when he's not he's being a liar a deceitful liar any um after that so once we have the abomination of desolation we have these calamities so i'll go ahead and read it out green grass and one-third of the trees are burned up one-third of the sea becomes blood one-third of the ships and seas life destroyed one-third of waters turn bitter one-third of the sun moon and stars do not shine locusts wield the, the beast's military power 200 million man army um, a third of the mankind is killed 
And then at the seventh trumpet, the kingdom of God is declared. But like I was saying, Moses and Elijah do their witnessing, their prophesying for the first three and a half years. During those trumpets that I mentioned, they are overcome and killed by the beast and then are revived three and a half days later by the breath of life or the spirit of God breathing into them and reviving them. They get taken back up. I assume also the 144,000 go with them as well. But during those first three and a half years, Moses and Elijah, along with the 144,000, gather uh, uh, basically the great multitude that the book of revelation talks about which like i said the church is going to get raptured up before the actual seven years of israel's tribulation starts so going into the first three and a half years everybody left on earth outside of the sealed of the hundred forty four thousand of moses and elijah who have protection um, and the enemies of moses and elijah um, whoever tries to harm them Moses and Elijah, they breathe fire out of their mouths and they kill their enemies. So that's obviously, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool if you ask me. Um, but anyways, during the, these first three and a half years, due to this witnessing and this prophesying, the leftover people now within the seven years of Israel's tribulation are going to be um, unrepentant people of the church so these people likely before the rapture happened thought that they were actually a part of the church but yet they weren't actually repentant in their heart and their soul so therefore they're left into the tribulation you will have just straight up unbelievers people that just don't believe in the bible and the truth and the, the holy spirit and whatnot you know jesus and everything um and then also within that you're going to have uh, obviously Israel which are which is which are the Jews because it's Israel's tribulation um, and then a certain number of those three people those groupings that I just mentioned during the first three and a half years of the seven trumpets are going to be one two one over by the prophesying and witnessing of Elijah and Moses and the hundred forty four thousand and all that that all that they do which they will not receive the mark of the beast um, and the people that don't heed the warnings basically of the 144,000 and Elijah and Moses will receive the mark of the beast and then after leading into what you see right here the seven bowls which are the bowls of God's wrath which is this is what this is the great tribulation the absolute worst period of the seven years of Israel's tribulation so on to this great tribulation goes in those three groups that I mentioned after Elijah and Moses and I assume the 144,000 are taken up and the ones that were won over by the prophesying and witnessing will basically seek cover. Essentially, they will hide and whatnot from these atrocious calamities um, that they be, may be safe from it. But all those who took the mark of the beast, which I will get to at the end of this video, uh, to them, they worship the Antichrist. They worship Satan, essentially, because they were unbelievers unrepentant people who were drowned in their iniquities and their sin but the first of all sores afflict those who accepted the mark of the beast sea so I'm, all the sea turns to blood all creatures die rivers turn to blood mankind scorched by the sun mankind blasphemes god that's that's essentially talking about a uh, coronal mass ejection which they've been talking about that a lot recently if you aren't aware of that just within certain news articles and things like that Fifth bold beasts seat of government is afflicted. Sixth, the Euphrates is dried up. World armies gather to Armageddon. And the seventh bold the earth is utterly shaken. So that concludes these three images. But before I get to the black hole, another part of eschatology, which is the study of the end times when it comes to the Bible, is the Magog invasion. There's two camps of belief when it surrounds this that it's more likely associated with the Great Tribulation and the Battle of Armageddon. I don't personally believe that. I believe that the Magog invasion, because Magog lines up with Russia because it's north of Israel or Jerusalem. I personally believe, generally at this point, that the Magog invasion was the Ukraine invasion, and it is something that is a part of the birth pangs and the seven seals leading up into the first three and a half years of the total seven years of Israel's tribulation. But finally, the last topic of this video is going to be the Mark of the Beast, which I put it on my Twitter account a few days ago, but the Mark of the Beast is Blockchain Solutions. 
as you can see right here, part of Revelation 13, 16 through 17, and he causes all, speaking about the Antichrist, just Satan in general, he causes all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, and he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. The mark gets set out onto the world during the first three and a half years, and then it leads into the last three and a half years, which were the seven bowls of wrath. And then those people who took it, worship Satan essentially, have the wrath poured out upon them, and then out of that come the great multitude, one over during the first three and a half years. Um, but again, this, like I said, the mark of the beast, I know it may sound kind of overbearing at this point, but blockchain is the mark of the beast. It will eventually be used for that, as it says. This has to do with buying or selling and basically being allowed to enter society and things like that. Because, I mean, obviously, in order to enter society, you have to buy and sell. I mean, obviously, when you go to the grocery store, you're buying and selling. I mean, and it's going to get worse than that, too. I mean, when it comes to Russia, there's already companies out with respect to Russia creating basically QR codes, which are just obviously things that hold, hold within it informational data, digitized data that you put on your wrist. Uh, and you swipe it across this thing or whatever some for some form of hardware technology that it reads that QR code which is connected to your blockchain wallet and plenty of other things likening back to the white horseman and the bow and the the, uh, the illusion that I was making there in a very non-specific and indirect way with the sharpness of the bow um, but basically and this also goes back to Bill Gates. Bill Gates has a patent with respect to cryptocurrency stuff that's... You can look this up for yourself. Plenty of things will just... In terms of like fact-checking sites will say that it's just bogus and whatnot. But there is a patent with respect to Microsoft, to Miss Bill Gates in general. Under the general name of WO2020-060606, WO World Order, which New World Order... Great Reset World Economic Forum that they literally talk about out loud verbatim nonchalantly at this point. Like it is just not, wasn't written in the Bible thousands of years ago before all of this happened because the Bible is the precise revel revel revelation of the very fabric of this temporal existence that we've all taken part in from the first day that we could consciously really remember anything. Um, but World Order 2020 is zero six zero six 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 so and then obviously when it says uh either the name of the beast or the number of his name is likened back to six 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 and it goes further on in this chapter 13 of revelation to say that with those with those them calculate the number of this beast um his name and it says six hundred sixty and six basically so six hundred sixty six um so outside of that right here just to get on my preacher mode right now um, that we should be baptized in his name whether you are part of the gentile church or you are a uh, a jew as well so right here i'm just basically going to go through on why you may need to be baptized in his name it says right here in matthew 16 18 and i say also unto thee that thou art peter pay specific attention to these words that i have all caps Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let me go down here. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, Jesus is saying, in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, singular, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Again, me, Jesus, his name was given all power. And authority in heaven and in earth where to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost which is Christ Jesus Jesus Christ Yahushua etc and then it goes on to say Jesus says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of the world amen and then we have down here in the book of Acts, after the four Gospels, which you can technically, in a way, think about as a fifth Gospel, if you will, it's, it then says, you remember, so Peter says, going back to this up here, it says, Jesus says to Peter that, Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, which is the Gentile church, which is 
or the spec two through through prayer seeking Christ and accepting him into your heart and then after that Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost um, and then right here I just have praise be to the one true God of Israel Yahweh Oshua HaMashiach then right here I just wanted to like I said I, if you can see it pretty clearly on here I have overlaid on here that hot verbation that I've been talking about and then behind it I have a logarithmic portrayal of the universe on the outermost edges you can see what is the CMB cosmic microwave background radiation at the center I have Salvador Dali's fourth dimensional depiction of Christ upon a hypercross or technically it's a hypercube when you unfold a hypercube it looks like a cross in four dimensions quotes four dimensions because there's only three dimensions of space and then one of time and that's why I call it four dimensions um, but the reason why I have this hot vibration so this spherical ball of yarn of on here is because this goes back to like I said the zeta function and basically the distribution of galaxies throughout the entire universe it also goes back to the distribution of when you look into the realm of quantum physics the bosonic and fermionic particles which in my theory don't exist as such particles all particles are just microcosmic singularic points of dielectromagnetic control basically so they're just basically crux terminal points basically that house within it the data needed to control the Lamar frequency that dictates the center of an atom or the galaxy and why the galaxy spirals as it does and why our solar system is specifically fine-tuned to have the life that we do and etc so on and so forth but right here again just going back to this image as you can see right here for going again like I said going back to the image for by him by him I mean Jesus Christ Christ Jesus Yahushua all was made we have right here Genesis 1 1 through 4 in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth in Genesis God right here is it's it's Elohim which likens to a multiplicity in terms of the Trinity which again the Lord our God of Israel is just one the Trinity is one but continuing and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness again going back to right here God being Elohim later on within Genesis chapter 1 on the sixth day when God says let us make man in our image and our likeness he's saying it's saying God is saying our again likening back to the Trinity Father Son and the Holy Spirit which again all has one name as I mentioned previously with the baptism right here in Colossians 1 15 through 18 who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature and for for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things are created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence Colossians 1 15 through 18 in the beginning was the word whom is Jesus Christ and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness not darkness comprehended it not John 1 1 through 5 and also in the Bible Jesus says that he is I am the light of the world Jesus says also likening back to when God in the Old Testament Exodus chapter 3 verses 14 through 15 gives to Moses his memorial name unto all generations Exodus chapter 3 verses 14 through 15 what number is that that is 3.1415 that is pi it's a transcendental rational number when you actually go back to Genesis 1 and you take in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and in the Hebrew because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew you take the number of the letters times the product of the letters because Hebrew is a language has numerical values associated with each letter again take the number of the letters times the product of the letters and divide it by the number of the words times the product of the words it gives you pi so pi is found in Genesis 1 1 
you go to John 1, 1, which is in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. These are the two verses in the Bible that speak about the beginning, the creation. If you do the same thing here, this time it's in Greek. Greek also, because the New Testament was written in Greek, the Greek also is just one of the two languages that has numerical values associated with its letters. You do the same thing here, number of letters times the product of the letters divided by the number of the words times the product of the words, you get given Euler's number, which has to do with logarithmic identities and functions, etc. Which, like I said, goes back to this right here being basically, as I said, with this vortex right here that spirals down into Christ. If you were to start right here and logarithmically zoom into the center of the universe or the center of each galaxy, it really honestly doesn't matter, but it's better just to think about it as the center of the universe. The image that you get, what you see is, again, according to Colossians, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? He is Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus is his name, as I said earlier. Praise be to the one true God of Israel, Yahweh, Yahushua HaMashiach. Um, but that concludes... Um, this video that I wanted to get out to you guys once more I hope you all enjoyed this content I hope from the bottom of my soul that the things that I went over in this video with respect to the Bible touched you in a way that may lead you to the everlasting truth and to the everlasting life that you may seek Christ in your heart through prayer that you may accept him and be baptized in his name for the remission of your sins that you may receive the Holy Spirit and be a part of him unto eternity all that being said I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you all have a blessed day <laughs>